Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Shannon Krogan, and I am the Director of Transfer Admission here at Chapman. Um, it's nice to be here this morning with all of you. I'm broadcasting from the city of Orange, but at home. So as most of you are also probably at home as well, we are still in our quarantine phase and working remotely at Chapman for what looks like to be the remainder of this fall semester. Um, but excited that we can kind of be here with you this morning to give you some information on the transfer process. We're gonna cover a couple of different things today, the basics about transferring, how credits and units are evaluated, and then we're gonna go a little bit into the financial aid and application process for transfer students. In the past, when we've been on campus, um, we typically only did these about once a month. Uh, now, obviously, that we're in the virtual world temporarily, hopefully we'll be back to campus soon. We're able to offer these a little bit more frequently. So we're doing these twice a month um, as we're getting prepared for our next application cycle. So we're going to talk about that today for spring of 2021 as well as fall of 2021. Um, and so we'll be covering that as well today. This is not the only time you can connect with us on the transfer team. We're gonna definitely talk to you a little bit today as well about other ways that you can connect with us virtually as you're moving through this admission process potentially as a transfer student. I was a transfer student myself. I grew up here, I'm from Orange County, not here from this bedroom, but here in Orange County. I'm from Costa Mesa. And I went to Orange Coast College and a little bit of Golden West College for two years after I graduated from high school and ended up finding Chapman very late in my college search process. It was not a school that was on my radar at all and ended up uh, going to Chapman and coming in as a sociology major with an emphasis in social work. I lived on campus for the two years that I was at Chapman. Obviously had a great experience because I'm still here. Um, and I, I truly do love working with transfer students. I think once you're a transfer student, you're always one. And so I definitely have a heart um, for this process and working with this type of student population. I wanna spend a couple seconds on um, having my colleague, my partner in crime, my work wife, Yasmin Mendez. Um, I miss her terribly. She's co-presenting with me today and she's gonna cover the last half of the session, but I wanna give her a second to introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, I'm Yasmin. I am the transfer admission counselor here at Chapman. So I do have the awesome job of being able to work with Shannon, but as a transfer student myself, I also have that ability to work with all of our transfer population, whether you're coming in from a community college or a four-year institution. Um, I also grew up like Shannon in Orange County, but I did not attend Chapman for my undergrad. I went to a bigger four-year institution, but I am now in my graduate studies here at Chapman for the master's in leadership development. So I'll then back to Shan and then, Shan, do you want me to control the slides or do you want to do it? Um, I can control my first half. Yeah, I can do it, I think. Um, thanks. Okay, all right, everyone, well, let's get started. Um, I've got a couple of, like I said, beginning slides here that we want to kind of go over before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of, of the majors and the general education requirements. I'm not going to cover necessarily everything on this first slide here, but I want to go over a couple of bullet points that I think are helpful um, to you as you are kind of moving through this process. Um, overall, we have about a 58% admit rate for transfer students. So for the most part, it tends to be a little bit less competitive to get admitted as a transfer into Chapman than it does coming out of high school. There are some exceptions to that, of course. We definitely have some talent-based areas for our majors that are uber competitive for both the high school students and the transfer students. But as a whole, our admit rate for transfers in general tends to be a little bit higher than it does for the incoming high school class. Uh, we have a, a 414 calendar schedule that I always like to talk about. Um, we're on the semester system here at Chapman. So we have four months in the fall, four months in the spring. And then we have this one month inner session, we call it inner term at Chapman, that's sandwiched in between the end of the fall and before the start of the spring semester. I mention this because it's an awesome opportunity to take one class in depth for about three and a half weeks in between those two semesters at obviously an accelerated pace. You can take up to four units in intercession. It's not mandatory, it's never mandatory. But I think for my transfers, it's a great way to keep the momentum going. 
if you want to just keep kind of chugging away at those units a little bit. Um, or if you came in a little behind. I know for myself, I had a semester where I fell a little below what I wanted to be carrying in that semester. So intercession was a great way for me to kind of play a little bit of catch up and, and get caught up in my units and my classes a little bit. It's a great time to be on campus um, normally. Hopefully we'll be back on campus for intercession this year, fingers crossed. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a band of brothers, so to speak, when you're in intercession, because not everyone's on campus, obviously. So when you're there, it's a really good bonding experience with the other students that are taking those types of classes. We offer general education courses, major related courses, and in some cases, many travel courses during that intercession timeframe. And so again, it's just kind of an interesting time to be on campus. There's also no lines for anything, um, which I loved. There's parking is great. There's no lines at Starbucks. The gym is wide open. Um, we have probably half of our student population on campus during that time. So it's a fun way to kind of explore the campus a little bit more and, and bond with your fellow classmates that are taking intercession at the same time. Chapman is a private institution, so we actually don't require a specific minimum unit count in order to make a transfer move. So therefore, we get transfers from all different points in their transfer career. Sometimes we'll get transfers that will enter in as maybe second semester freshmen in their unit count, or sometimes we'll get them as sophomores, juniors, sometimes seniors, that's not always advisable, but we can go into that a little bit later. Um, so again, most private colleges will not have uh, necessarily a minimum unit count to apply as a transfer student. In our eyes at Chapman, once you graduate from high school and you start your college record after high school graduation, you are a transfer applicant. Whether you've completed transfer courses or you're just in progress with them for the first time, if those are done after you graduated from high school, you're considered a, a transfer applicant. So that's good to know. We're getting ready to get geared up for our next admission cycle, which is kind of crazy because it seems like we're still recovering from our last one that we're in. We literally just started school at Chapman yesterday. Um, so the fall semester of 2020 started yesterday. Um, and we're online fully for this fall semester, which we were hoping not to have to be, but obviously that's kind of what we ended up having to do. We don't quite yet know what things are gonna look like mid-year, um, but we are keeping our fingers crossed and planning that we will make some sort of return, ideally back to campus in the middle of the year, even if it's kind of in a hybrid fashion. Um, this is the timeline for spring. So I just wanna kind of go over this real quickly, and then we'll talk about fall next. Our spring application is open now. It opened a couple weeks ago. It's due October the 15th of 2020 coming up. So you have plenty of time if you're looking to apply into spring to apply. It really doesn't matter when you apply as long as you get your documents in by the 15th of October. Yaz and I um, are doing quite a bit of outreach and virtual traveling for the next month and a half. So we're gonna process applications as they come in and get them set up for reading, but we're not really gonna be reading and making admission decisions um, until after that deadline hits. So don't rush through this process. You've got plenty of time. Once we start making admission decisions, we roll those out on an ongoing basis. So I would say the majority of our admission decisions for spring are back out by about the middle of November. It's a pretty quick turnaround process um, for those that are applying for the spring. December 1st is when students have to say yay or nay, I'm coming to Chapman in the spring. And then we spend the rest of December and the month of January preparing for advising, registration, and orientation with schools starting the 1st of February of 2021 for that mid-year transfer cycle. For those of you that might be thinking of fall of 21, or even a, a, a semester beyond that, which also is perfectly fine. That application opens in the middle of November coming up. So this is really important to know. If you're applying for fall of 2021, you don't wanna apply just yet. Let the transfer application for that cycle open up, which happens in the middle of November coming up, and then it's due February the 15th of 2021. So you've got plenty of time. That almost gives you about three months to get your application in, much like the spring cycle, it does not matter when you apply as long as you get everything in postmarked by the 15th of February. Um, and so that's important to know. 
we will start releasing admission decisions around usually the first part of March and then ongoing from there. I'd say the majority of our admission decisions are out between mid-March and mid-April for that cycle. And then June 1st is your deposit deadline to make your decision on if you're going to come to Chapman if you end up getting admitted. And then we spend the entire summer doing advising, registration, orientation, and then classes begin the very end of August next year for fall of 2021. We're a little unique in the sense that we have two admission cycles for transfers. We have a fall and a spring cycle. And so it's important to know early on kind of what you should be targeting. We definitely have majors with prerequisites. So regardless of the semester you're applying into, it's, it's good to be mindful of certain majors have prerequisites that have to be met. We've got a great resource for that on our website, on our transfer page, and it'll show you the individual colleges and majors outlined at Chapman that you need to have some prerequisites either completed or at least started with by the time you submit your application. Um, in terms of changing majors or double majoring, we always get this question on incoming transfer students. Technically, if a transfer gets admitted, ends up coming to Chapman, yes, they could change their major potentially, or they could double major. We kind of advise against that with transfers. Obviously, if you're a transfer, you're coming in with some amount of units coming into Chapman. And so we don't want you there any longer than you have to be there for. And sometimes changing your major around once you get to Chapman or taking on a double major could potentially result in you staying at Chapman longer than you really need to be. And so we want to be mindful of that. So that's something that we're a little cautious with. I always say the rule of thumb is the earlier you transfer in your unit count, the more flexibility you might have for those kinds of things. Um, we offer different types of degrees at Chapman. We have Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Science. Typically, our Bachelor of Fine Arts programs um, are best served ideally to apply into for a fall admission cycle. We do allow some of those majors to apply in the middle of the year. You can see on this slide down below, we've got three BFA degrees that you cannot apply into in the middle of the year for spring. And you'll see that on the application because you won't find those majors on the spring application because we took them off of there. All the other majors are open to applying into in the middle of the year. The Bachelor of Fine Arts programs are pretty sequenced and structured. And so it can be a little challenging when you try to enter in the middle of the year um, with the way the sequencing of the courses go. So we, we typically try to funnel most of our BFA applicants into a fall admission cycle. But again, in some cases, you could apply potentially for mid-year. So it's just good to be kind of mindful of that. I think a good rule of thumb on this slide is if you're looking at a Bachelor of Science degree, they're gonna have prerequisites. So that's your sciences, your mathematics, your computer science, uh, your business degrees. So if you're thinking of a Bachelor of Science degree, be mindful of the fact that those are probably gonna have some prerequisites that we wanna work with you on um, to be ideally done by the time you start classes at Chapman. So that's, that's good to know on that. Some of these degrees can take a little bit longer to finish than others. So that's also an important thing to note as well. Generally, your BFA and your Bachelor of Music programs carry a higher unit count to them, and they're a little bit more structured and sequenced. So fast forwarding through them is not usually a possibility. So it's good to be mindful of that, that depending on your degree, and that's kind of why we list them out on this slide, you might potentially be at Chapman a little bit longer than you had anticipated. And again, you can find some of that information out ahead of time before you apply when we review your transfer credits and, and maybe try to do a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment with you before you apply for admission. Couple of highlights here. Um, I think the main thing that I wanna point out that we always get a lot of questions on, we are very committed to transfer students at Chapman. And I'm not just saying that because we're in a transfer session. Um, we are living literally amongst several community colleges just in our nearby area alone. And we get students transfers from all over, not just from Southern California. But I think geographically where we're located, we've always been a very transfer friendly institution. We have enrollment goals specific to transfers that are different than the high school students. We're committed to bringing in a transfer population for the middle of the year for spring and also for the fall. 
And, and I think in reality, transfers add a lot of value to Chapman. You know, transfers come in from all walks of life. Um, we get transfers that are very traditional, went to high school and did a year or two at a community college and then made a transfer move. We also have transfers that are um, leaving the military, transfers that have been married or having um, have partners and spouses and children, um, transfers that have taken gaps in their transfer work to um, serve in the military, um, work, gain real world life experience. We love that diversity that the transfer population brings in here at Chapman. And we've always been committed to carving out some space for an incoming class to consist of some transfer students. So I, I think that's good to know. I always like to talk about that a little bit too, um, because it is definitely part of our commitment here at Chapman. I'm gonna go into a couple more slides before I hand it over to Yaz. Um, and this one is, is talking a little bit about how transfer credits work. This is always a question that we get is, oh gosh, how do my units or my credits come in? Units and credits are kind of the same thing. If a class is transferable, it's gonna come in one of three ways. It's gonna come in and count for something specific in general education, something in the major, or what we call elective credit. Elective credit means it transfers for units and goes towards your GPA, but it doesn't necessarily take the place of a requirement somewhere in general education or in your major. And it's perfectly fine to have some elective credits. That's okay to have. If you're coming from a California community college, it's very hard, especially for Yaz and I, because we were both California Community College transfers, OCC and Golden West for me, Fullerton for Yaz. It, we really push you guys to try and come in with one of the California transfer options done, which is the IGETSI, the CSU, or the ADT degree. Those are not required of you to get admitted, but we really push you to get one of those done. Not so much to get admitted, but because it wipes out the majority of the general education once you're at Chapman. And Yaz is gonna kind of go over that in her first slide when she takes over the next couple of ones. Um, so that's always our push for the California Community College transfers. Yes, you can transfer earlier than that, but we really do push those transfer options if you can. If you're coming from a four-year college, obviously the sooner the better. I think the longer you stay at a four-year college, the more embedded you're gonna get in their curriculum and their requirements and it may not make the most sense to make a transfer move. And so that's something to be mindful of. We don't cap the amount of units you can come in with from a four-year institution. We do from a two-year, and that's at 70 units, which is quite a lot. From a four-year, there's no cap, but there's always a but. Um, you have to do at least 48 units in what we call residency at Chapman. So regardless of how many units you have coming into Chapman, you have to do at least 48 units, which is about two years worth of coursework on our campus to get a degree from us. So depending on where you're at in your four-year transfer process, if you're a junior or a senior at a four-year college and you want to make a transfer move, we're probably going to talk you out of that because you're going to definitely be at Chapman longer than what it would take you to finish at your home institution. And we want to be mindful of that as well, too. In regards to general education, we've got two slides on this. Our first slide is our basic general education consisting of six what we call shared inquiry classes. In a nutshell, it's an English, an art, a science, a math, a humanities, and then a social science. This is very basic. Many of your colleges will have this same type of GE outline. And this by far is, is the main part of our general education we try to get the majority of our transfer students out of, if we can, before they make a transfer move. The second half is a little bit more specific to just Chapman's campus. We have a first year seminar course, a secondary area of study, and our global citizens cluster. The first year seminar course, almost all of our transfer students typically get out of that. If you have 24 or more transferable units at the time you start classes at Chapman, not when you apply, but when you start classes at Chapman, you automatically waive out of this if those units were done after your high school graduation date. So that's about a year's worth of college. The secondary area of study is the eventual declaration of a double major, a minor, or what we call a cluster. And remember what we said earlier about a double major? 
not usually one that transfers usually end up taking that option on. They're usually going to do more of a minor or what we call a cluster, um, which is kind of a themed inquiry area. Both of those areas are going to allow you to dive into a different subject area other than your major, but not obviously as deep of a dive as you would if you were going to double major in something. You don't declare your secondary area of study till after you get to Chapman. So you don't have to worry about that right now. You're going to get some help declaring that. And the main difference between a minor and what we call the cluster is just in the unit count. The clusters less units than the minor would be. So we're not going to have you take something on that's going to keep you at Chapman longer than you need to be. But it's just something we want you to be mindful of that's going to come up once you get to Chapman. We also uh, require two classes in what we call global study, one in citizenship community service and the other one in language. These are classes that can be taken at Chapman or can be transferred into Chapman through your transfer coursework. So you don't have to wait to take these at Chapman. We also offer a lot of study abroad opportunities under normal circumstances. We're going to be doing that again, obviously, soon, hopefully in the near future. Right now, not so much. Um, but if you end up doing a travel course, a study abroad program through Chapman, not in your transfer work, um, there's ways that you could potentially get out of some of this through that travel opportunity. I want to spend a few seconds on foreign language real quick, and then I'm going to hand it over to Yasmin. You don't need language to get into Chapman. You need it to get out of Chapman. So that's really important to know. Not a requirement to get in. It's a requirement to get out. It's one semester at the 200 intermediate level of a foreign language. So we have 101, 102, 201. 201 is the only one you actually need. You can transfer in with this if you want to get it done before you get to Chapman. You can start in on it and pick up where you left off once you get to Chapman if you want to do it that way. If you passed an AP or an IB exam coming out of high school or you're fluent in another language other than English, there could be some potential ways you might be able to get out of the language study requirement. But I think bottom line is your years that you took in high school alone, just the years don't get you out of this requirement. It's either through your transfer coursework or your language ability in another language other than English or through an AP, IB, or a transfer credit that you incoming transfer. So that's important to note. And I think with that, I'm going to hand it over to Yasmin. I forgot to mention both Yas and I are doing the chat moderation. So if you guys have questions as we're moving along this presentation, feel free to go ahead and start typing those in and Yas and I will respond to those as well. All righty. Thanks, Shan. So I'm going to continue just kind of to finalize this little academic section for my transfer students coming in from a California community college. As Jen mentioned, we are in a very um, nice area here at Chapman where we do have a lot of community college systems just nearby and a lot of our local community colleges are some of our top feeders for the student population coming in. And so I highly recommend the California transfer plans um, I personally did the IGETSI transfer plan as a transfer student. And so if you are unfamiliar with these or you've never heard of the California, the CSU transfer plan or the IGETSI transfer plan or the associate's degrees for transfer, contact and make an appointment with your community college counselor right away. So they can walk you through that process and let you know what that plan would look like, how many classes you would have to do because we here at Chapman are one of the few private institutions that actually honors and accepts that full certification. So it benefits you, not only in terms of having a good strong admission candidacy, but also in the sense that once you come into Chapman, you get to kind of be the person that is in the driver's seat of picking the rest of your coursework, making sure that there are classes that you're interested in, that you're gonna have fun doing, that will complement your major, or like Shan men mentioned, the secondary area of study, which you get to choose and pair up with for completing the rest of those graduation requirements. So this slide just pretty much shows you out of the two previous slides of the GE plan, what the California transfer plans would wave you out of. The way I like to put it to students is it pretty much weighs you out of 90% of Chapman's GE plan, with the only exception being the foreign language that Shan just mentioned. That one um, would be separate, but again, if you wanna get that done out of the way before transferring to Chapman, 
you can most certainly start in on those credits or complete that final class before making that transfer move. Okay, so now we're gonna go into financial aid. I first wanna talk about the types of aid that transfer students are eligible for, and then we'll go into the cost of attendance page. So what you see on this slide are the three different general broad forms of aid that students are eligible for. The first one being merit-based scholarships. These are dependent on your academic rigor, your GPA, your course load, your major and GE preparation that you've got. This is another good reason why we highly encourage students to make sure that they're connecting with us. And if the cost is something that you're gonna be paying attention to and you wanna come in with as much money as you're eligible to receive, try to aim for a merit-based scholarship. We will work with you on your personal case and try to look at where you're at and try to give you a nice reasonable goal of where to aim to land on one of those merit ranges if you are close to one. The departmental scholarships are for some limited um, major-based programs that we have here at Chapman. So they are gonna be limited. So for these, I would recommend making sure that you are A, not only paying attention to your major prompts when you are writing them in the Common App, but B, you also submit your application on time. That way you are able to land a space in any of those scholarship, departmental um, scholarship committees so that you have that flexibility and that reveal. There's no separate application for merit-based scholarships or for departmental scholarships. Since merit-based, we review all students for at the time that they apply and we review them for admission. And departmental scholarships are specifically picked out into committees based on the majors that you're applying into. And then as far as need-based aid, this one is tied to the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA application. So you wanna make sure for this one, you are submitting the appropriate one on time. This one you do need to make sure you send alongside with your common application. You wanna pay close attention to the timeliness of this application. And if you need help with getting guidance on filling this out, reach out to your counselors, reach out to us if there's something that we can guide you on. But this is super important that you submit it ahead of time. Another thing that Shannon and I um, tend to see as much of a trend with our transfer population, which we totally understand, we've been in your place as well, is that students assume that you can wait to submit your FAFSA until you are starting to hear back from colleges. And that is not the case. You wanna make sure you're submitting your application on time so that by the time your admission decision is released, there is no holdup with you being able to review your options, review your offers, because it, there is a time process and a protocol for the financial aid office um, to then wait to process your materials or sometimes students are picked into verification. So make sure you're paying attention to the, de the deadlines and the timing of this process. 80% of our students though are receiving some form of financial aid here at Chapman. That's important to note when you start looking at, you know, that major question that I know I as a transfer student went through, which was, okay, if I'm applying to these different schools, what is it gonna cost me? What do I need to start preparing for? What do I have control of versus what do I not? So for that reason, we wanted to make sure that when we're presenting this slide, we break it down by first and foremost, one of the major key factors that can affect how much you are looking to be paying to transfer to Chapman. So that key factor being your housing status. So as you can see from left to right, it is living with your parents or relatives at home or choosing to live off campus on your own or choosing to live on campus in one of Chapman's residence halls or one of Chapman's owned apartment complexes. Um, so this is a key distinguishing factor as you'll start going down and looking at the cost. Transfer students here at Chapman are not required to live on campus, unlike our incoming first years out of high school. And like I mentioned, Chapman being very transfer friendly and us having a lot of local community college feeder you know, students, we want to make sure that this is an option that you have when you're thinking about the control and what the experience would be like. So obviously, as a mid-sized institution, we are catering towards making sure that students, whether you're commuting or you have to live on campus or you're living off campus, that your experience isn't deferring 
that you are still able to have the same access and opportunities to what you want to be a part of towards getting involved without feeling like you need to have, you know, that added necessity of being on campus. Um, the top tiers, the top three line items that you're seeing are some of the most um, fixed line items, meaning these are the actual costs to tuition and the student fees. But I do want to point out that everything else below that line, books and school supplies, room and board, personal costs, transportation, if you take out loans, the rest of these fees are just averaged out. All other institutions do the same thing because once the financial aid office does receive your FAFSA application or your California Dream Act, they will then go ahead and look at the cost of attendance for all of your institutions, and then they will grant you what you're eligible to receive. And so we wanna make sure that students are able to receive the max of what, the, of what they're able to get out. And for this reason, we also wanna make sure that students are aware of what they are in control of. So for that being said, making sure that you're doing as much GE as you can from a California community college if you're in that situation, or making sure that you're connecting with us and transferring the sooner the better if you're coming in from a four-year institution, and making sure that your transferable credit that you're bringing in with you is stuff that is going to work for you here at Chapman so that you're not losing any credits and that you're on time with your timing to be able to graduate in a timely manner and make the most of your transfer experience here at Chapman. So I hope that again, you understand that this is just kind of the sticker price of how institutions evaluate what it would cost. And a lot of this cost, you know, aren't actual bills that you're receiving. And the best way to pretty much know where you stand, what offer would be given to you is by making sure that when you apply, you submit your applications, you do your best work and phrasing and putting together your written statements for your personal statements sections in the Common App, and you connect with us. So we can also work with you ahead of time. Another thing is making sure you're applying to outside scholarships. A lot of California community colleges have their own endowment offices. They have, you have your own financial aid office. So there is a lot of misinformation that I feel like a lot of transfer students don't know that there's that help out there. Um, if you're not willing to go and ask and advocate for yourself, I know for myself, I made sure that I already knew I was in a place where I was not going to get a lot of help from my parents for my transfer move. And so by reaching out to my financial aid office, they pointed me into the endowment office of my California Community College. And I was actually able to apply and receive some additional nice outside scholarships that I could carry with me that were renewable until I graduated from my four year. So there is a lot of help out there. Make sure that you don't let the cost, um, you know, keep you from applying. And know that we are also here once you get your admission offer and you get your financial offer. So if you don't want to work out those numbers um, and see what that's looking like, if it's feasible, if we recommend that you do the transfer move, we will have that conversation with you. We're not going to push you and try to get you to enroll. Um, so make sure that you know that we are here to support you all. Um, and we are open to that conversation once you get to that place and time. Okay, so now to finalize the presentation before we go into maybe any last minute questions or just talk about how you can contact us, we are going to go over the application process. So these are the materials that you wanna make sure you're starting to prep for if you're getting ready to apply for either our current spring session or our future fall session. So the top little segment are just materials that you need to personally submit that can be found on the Common App, which are our Chapman specific questions. So make sure that you're adding Chapman within the college list in the Common App and make sure that again, like I mentioned previously, you're spending some time to work through those personal statement questions. I personally recommend copying and pasting them into a Word doc or a Google doc and giving yourself the time to work through it and then just copying and pasting it back once you're getting ready to submit. Um, for any talent-based majors here, um, you wanna make sure that you're reviewing the creative supplement materials. Those are posted on our website. So you have access to those all year round. You don't have to wait for the Common App to open 
in order to gain access to what those materials are. But I will point out that the creative supplement, you can only submit through the Chapman portal. Students don't get access to that Chapman portal until 24 to 48 hours after you submit your Common App. So make sure that you're aware of that timing so that you can have that time to be able to upload those materials or maybe get any feedback from your mentors before you finalize that application. The rest of these materials that you request are things that you want to make sure you are looking to the institutions or your previous high school or any other offices to submit on your behalf officially. So you cannot email these, you cannot upload these or post them on the Common App or send them in to us personally. That would be your college transcripts. So whether you're in progress with, with coursework now or you previously previously did dual enrollment at high school, or you maybe attended one off class years ago somewhere else, we need all official college transcripts sent directly from that institution. We will also ask for one letter of rec. This one, you can actually submit your recommender's contact in the Common App, but they will have to then send on your behalf their letter of rec separately. They get a separate link. Just make sure that you note that as soon as you put in their name and their contact info, it will ping them and send them that request on your behalf. It does not wait to do that until after you submit your Common App. And you don't have to wait for them to send in and fill out their part in order for you to submit your Common App. So I know I get that question a lot. You can also have your recommender send in their letter separately to us. And keep in mind that a recommender on the transfer end when we're discussing this application process and how it varies from when you applied maybe as a high school student, this person does not have to be a professor per se. This could be maybe a high school teacher or mentor you stayed in contact with that knows you well through your academic journey. This could be a current mentor from a community organization or a church organization. Um, this could be an employer as well. Um, so make note that this person should ideally more so match up, you know, the extent to how much they've known you and seen you through your academic journey compared to maybe like it having to be somebody specific to your major. So pay attention to that one. Let us know if you have any more one-off questions on that and who we recommend on your case to submit a letter of rec. High school transcripts. So I would say a good portion of our transfer students do end up in a case where they need to submit a high school transcript. But note that this for us is just to comply with federal policies to confirm a high school graduation date. So if you are gonna be under 60 completed college units at the time that you're going to click submit on your Common App, we will need to have records of an official high school transcript or a GED. So make sure that you're aware of that. You can get that done as soon as now. You don't have to wait to submit your Common App and finalize the rest of your materials before you send that in. So pay attention to that. And then AP or IB exams, these you can self-report on the Common App. Um, you only need official score reports once you're admitted and once you're looking to get college credit for them. So make sure that you consult with us to take a look at what are the minimum scores we accept and honor so that if you are going to be in a place where you want to use them for college credit, we can work with you and you can start sending those in if you if you know that they're going to benefit you in the admission review. And last but not least, some additional potential requests that the admission committee might ask for when they're reviewing your application. Um, that'll be maybe AP or IB exams that we know you took based on a high school transcript, but you didn't report them anywhere else. Um, midterm reports, if we see on your high school on your college transcript that you're in progress with any college coursework, um, we will hold for that and they will be posted on your applicant portal. So make sure that you are contacting your professors and getting that signature and that current grade and submitting it back. Um, dual enrollment, if the admission sees that you were involved in some sort of college credit in high school, but you didn't submit a college transcript, there could be the potential that they request for a final transcript from that college. And then a college officials report. 
if there was any um, information on the common application regarded to academic or personal disciplinary um, circumstances, there could be the potential that we ask for a college official's report. So if you are in that case, we, it will be listed on your portal and we will let you know what the protocol is to send that in to the admission committee. Um, real quick though, yes, we have a great question. Um, I think it was from Sarah that brought it up. I wanna make sure everybody's seeing it in the chat. If you're applying for fall 21, should you turn in your college transcripts right now? And, and I say no to that. And I think Yasmin would, would echo that. We want to see you at your most up-to-date work in your academic record. It helps with admission. It also helps with merit scholarship consideration. So if you're applying for fall of 21, you can start the application in mid-November when it opens. Totally fine to do that. But wait to send us your official transcript until your fall 20 grades are posted so that when we're reviewing you, that's the most up-to-date point in your academic record. Great question. Yes, I know that's another one that we get a lot of questions for. Um, and to finalize this presentation, we devised a little transfer, transfer tip slide. Um, so the first one being to reach out to our, us and the transfer team before you apply. They are not formal um, interviews. They are just informal counseling appointments that we want to make sure that, you know, we have for you all throughout the year so that you are able to connect with us, tell us about your transfer journey, and we can best guide you whether maybe you're torn between a major or you are just insecure on your academic coursework so we can help you plan out courses that you can do to be in a stronger, better stance. Um, honestly, we've counseled through a lot of different circumstances and situations. So again, know that us as transfer students, we have that lens, we have that perspective. So these appointments I think are very valuable, not only to us, but to students that have never before maybe gone through this process um, or maybe didn't expect to go through that process if you're currently maybe at another four-year institution. I also have listed our transferology link, which is a really neat database that we just started using and I'm so thankful for because I know as a transfer student with one of our biggest common questions on transfer credits, it's really hard sometimes to devise or get official concrete information before you get an admission decision because it is a lot there's a lot of work that goes into those reports, goes into validating coursework information, and Chapman is a private liberal arts college. We wanna make sure that we are giving you up-to-date information, and we're also not putting you in um, any sort of place where you wouldn't be able to continue your major prep in a, um, if you're not getting the coursework that you need, or if you turn out to be needing more than you thought you needed to continue on into a major. So all you need to do is click um, or type in this link, and you can also just go to our main webpage and in the search bar type in transferology, and we have a whole instruction page on how to create an account. You list in your coursework, and it automates you know, a preview of how those credits are transferred over. So like Shannon earlier mentioned, if it matches GE credit, major prep credit, or if it just comes in as elective credit. Um, I also want to give the tip of making sure that you are prioritizing those GEs that we know other colleges also want to see. So that being English coursework, math coursework, and any major prerequisites. Save syllabi for any of these classes that you've taken because chances are we might need to review those if you have taken them at an institution where we never before have articulated that spe those specific GE areas. And save your syllabi for any of major prep you've already started in on because that will be crucial to ensure that you're able to carry those credits over to your major to continue here at Chapman. And last but not least, submit your FAFSA on time. Um, make sure you're working through that and you're getting mentorship. You're having those financial conversations too with parents or guardians or anybody that's helping you support, you know, this part of financing your education. Don't wait until you, you know, are in that place where you need to make a final decision because I feel like at that point, you just want to make sure that you're picking an institution that you know will help you Get, go through your educational goals instead of having those really heavy subject matter conversations that you've never had before, you know, in that time and place. 
And I listed a QR code on here. So if you hold up your phone and you turn on your camera and scan it, scan this image, this QR, it should pop up a link to our transfer applicant guide. So um, make sure you refer to that. All of this presentation is built out in reference um, to that transfer applicant guide. We just updated it with the most new and updated information. So um, that is a really handy tool, especially if you can print it. Um, we have the GE plan in there. You can fill it out yourself and track yourself and see how you're going towards that area and completing what you need to do for a good admission candidacy. And I will leave you all off with our contact page. So here you will see we have our personalized emails. Um, this is our little transfer team. So Marie Burry in the bottom left does a lot of work with not only transfer students, but first year students and international students. We just received an, a new admission counselor for international um, population. So we are super lucky and happy to have him. So we need to get his page and his contact info updated on here. We also have Blas Villalobos, who is our Director of Veteran Affairs. So for any students that are in the military or are military dependents, we, he can definitely reach out and um, help answer any questions you might be having on those benefits before even applying to Chapman. And then our transfers inbox is listed up at the top. This is a great place for you to um, drop any questions, submit any transcripts to maybe have some more counseling before applying. And if you want to schedule a transfer appointment, make sure you are calling in our office number. This is how we primarily schedule those appointments. So make sure that if you want to see what our calendar time availabilities are, um, we have those dates now posted through the end of the year. So reach out to us and we can get you um, situated. And we are super um, looking forward to connecting with you all. I think personally for me, um, this is one of the best times that I think I really appreciate is getting to connect one on one with students and, you know, walking you through that process. Let Yasmin get in here for a second. Great job, everyone, with your questions. Um, really good stuff that came through in that chat. So hopefully everyone can kind of see those responses. I just want to echo um, again what Yasmin ended on. Please reach out to us. We know the transfer process tends to be a little bit more individualized, I think, than the cohort group coming in as seniors right out of high school all at the same time. And even if you have no clue as to what you want to do when you want to transfer, what you want to major in, that's a perfect time to meet with us. These meetings are, are not intimidating at all. They're literally advising appointments so that we can sit down and work with you one-on-one, -on -one. especially we had this come up earlier in the chat too. If you've applied before and either got admitted and didn't end up coming for whatever reason or didn't get admitted, definitely connect with us so that we can make sure you're reapplying at a good time. And we also sometimes keep previous documents. So there may be a few things you may not have to resubmit over again if you've already applied within the last couple of years. So that's also another good excuse to reach out to us. Even though we're not on campus right now, we are answering phones, we're taking appointments. You can call our front desk and get a human that will talk to you and, and help you schedule uh, that one-on-one -on -one appointment with us. And again, we both have a, a heart for working with, with this type of population. I know it's such an unusual time that everybody's in right now on top of the normal anxiety students have about the transfer process. So hopefully this session helped give you some basics, um, some good information to walk away with and to let you know that you've got some friendly faces on the other side of things um, to reach out to so we can work with you one on one. Yeah, as I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I, I want to thank you and, and thank you all for taking the time to listen to this session. Yeah, thank you all for definitely making some time. I hope you're all off to a good start to your fall terms, wherever you may be coming in from. And definitely reach out. We have those appointments Monday through Fridays, uh, and we have different varying times that we offer those appointment slots. All right, everyone, we'll sign off. You guys all have a great rest of your day. Take care, and hopefully we'll, we'll hear from you soon.